Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Ironfly YOLO. Metal Complex doesn't review cheap knives anymore. All he does is expensive knives. Why doesn't he do budget knives? I've got a playlist of 250 uploads consisting of nothing but uh, knives that I really like that are under $75. If you didn't know that, the playlist is called Cheap Knives I Like, and I suggest you check it out. I actually regularly uh, add to that playlist despite what some people think. So if you're new to my channel and you think all that's here is expensive knives, Definitely not. There's a lot of really great budget cutlery. And I'm actually about to add to that playlist today because this knife happens to be under $75. Who is Ironfly? It's actually Kunwu's budget brand. Kind of like how CJRB is the budget brand of uh, Artisan Cutlery or Senkut and Civivi are the budget brands of Wee Knives, right? Uh, that's what we're looking at here. And this is a cool knife that's made well. Uh, so I can't wait to share my thoughts with you guys. Thanks so much to Ironfly slash Kunwu for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. This knife will be linked down in the description. It comes in a couple of different configurations. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Let's go ahead and measure the YOLO. Uh, the overall length here. Oh my goodness, I have spit on this blade. Excuse me, please excuse me. Metal Complex, please remember to edit this part out so that that embarrassing moment isn't shared with the knife community. Uh, overall length of the YOLO, uh, about 7.75 inches, not quite 8 inches. Blade length is coming in at about 3.35, yeah, roughly. And then the cutting edge is about three inches thanks to a very large forward choil area. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and Others up against the AD10 and the AD20.5. Closer, I think, in overall size to the AD20.5, but a, a much taller profile overall. Let's put it up against the Spyderco. Where are you today? There you are. The Spyderco PM2. And the Spyderco Para 3. Once again, I think closer to the size of the uh, Para 3, but will carry much closer to the size of the PM2 just because of the height. And then finally up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue and the Hogue Deca. How's the action on this knife? Um, this is definitely made well. Uh, Kunwu has applied their typical great execution. And they also, I noticed are heat treating this 14C28N a little bit better than the general competition, which if you didn't know is very typical of Kunwu. Kunwu likes to hit those higher numbers. So what we usually see for 14C28N, on the low end we see 58 to 60, which is not great. Typically we see 59 to 61, which is I think okay for 14C28N. Kunwu apparently has dedicated uh, at least according to, I think it was White Mountain Knives listed this as 60 to 61. On top of that, this is a thin geometry. So this will perform. 14C28N is not going to win any awards in terms of potential edge retention across the board for budget steels. Rather, it is a steel that has incredible balance overall. So what we're doing is kind of tipping the scales more in the direction of potential edge retention, specifically for 14C28. And don't expect this to perform like M390, but it's cool that they're getting that number just a little bit higher while keeping it within, I would say, the upper end of the optimal range. Respect. Uh, pretty cool. So anyways, the action, very good. You know, it's a, it's a typical plunge lock. Plunge locks are not known across the board for always locking up perfectly. But if you do them right, they won't disengage with a little bit of spine impact or spine pressure. I'm not saying go out there and beat the crap out of these knives. But as you can see there, a light triple tap here doesn't do anything. That's all I check for on a button lock knife, and that's fine. Being able to uh, deploy this knife, being able to deploy any knife is very important. But deploying this knife is incredibly easy thanks to this huge oval that they've given you complete and total access to. I always mention that this is apparently a concept that is lost on certain companies. Let's give them a whole to access, giggity, but put part of it under the scale. Don't do that. <laughs> There's so many companies who do that. It's like the reason that people have enjoyed, you know, generally speaking, the, the like spider code deployments over the years because the hole is 
usually entirely or almost nearly entirely accessible, right? So uh, Kunwu has always done this really well, and they're doing it well here. You can very easily uh, reverse flick this or wheel it out. You know, you can even do the tricky spidey drop or what I wouldn't recommend. That's kind of stupid. But just, um, yeah, deploying it in general is really easy. Runs on bearings and is absolutely drop shut. Really, really beautiful swingy action um, without uh, sacrificing any, you know, pivot solidity. It's very uh, solid on the lockup, which is great. I have no issue with the action whatsoever. Let's do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It's a little bit thicker, but it's also contoured. This is really nice. It is just G10, but knives like this really emphasize a big difference between like just a flat, plain piece of G10 and when they contour it nicely, go around the edges here, it just looks really, really nice. They did a really, really nice job with this. Uh, executed really, really well. Um, so it is thicker, but definitely um, with the contouring, that's uh, a positive for sure. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. So this is where it gets a little awkward in the pocket because it's so tall. Both of these Spyderco knives, the PM2 and Para 3, are a little awkward in terms of height. And this guy is even taller by quite a bit, specifically this area. It's not going to bother everybody, but it will definitely bother some people. In terms of length, it's a little bit longer than the Para 3, nowhere near as long as the PM2. So I guess it really... Just like anything else, it depends on what you've been carrying. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Like I said, for materials here, we have beautiful G10. It is backed up on both sides with nested steel liners, which should be, you should you should note that. Oftentimes what allows certain knives to be less expensive with the same materials are flat pieces of G10 sitting right on top of a basic steel liner. It's not that much more expensive to uh, create a spot within uh, the scales to nest steel liners, but it is a little more expensive. And then you're also contouring it, which is again, a little more expensive. So these little tiny things are going to add up. Um, but, uh, yeah, 14 C 28 N that's also slightly higher on the heat treat. Also a little bit more expensive, right? Little tiny things like that. The weight on this guy is coming in at 4.3 ounces, not perfect ratios there, but just fine. Not super heavy for me. Might be heavy for you. Uh, the balance is right behind the pivot, which is going to uh, keep this thing from feeling absolutely ridiculous, um, you know, given that you're already kind of ha having to deal with a, a really tall blade. Let's go ahead and, before I forget, measure the blade stock thickness. Yeah, I was going to say because these calipers are just laying right here, so let's just do that. Blade stock thickness on the YOLO is coming in at 125 thousandths. Uh, so on the thinner side, not incredibly thin, but on the thinner side. And then finally, let's do the hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think everything here is going to be a T8, 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 pocket clip screw T8. Wonderful. That's what we like to see. And also, you'll see that the pocket clip can be mounted uh, for both right and left handed carry. And they give you an extra pocket clip, which is neat, right? Bend it out, no problem. You got another clip. Thank you. That's awesome. I don't love the, the, you know, wire clips, but hey, two clips, like, it's nice. It's not a huge, it's not a huge thing, but again, it's another one of those little things. So, as long as I drop that, I'm not even picked up. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. Let's move on into the meat and potatoes here. More little things just making this a very enjoyable product. Uh, mainly the ergonomic lines here. This is a blade shape. While it is tall, uh, it's the type of blade shape that I love for EDC. Not only is it going to be nice and thin and slicey, we can choke up here. We have meaningful jimping on a crowned spine. That's nice. We don't always see that, right? Really cool. Uh, we have a nice tip. Excellent for draw cuts. Uh, it's just a great kind of like almost all-purpose general EDC knife with a really tall blade. The tip will be slightly delicate, so just don't do, you know, don't go by grandpa's rules. Don't use this as a screwdriver. I would recommend, since you guys, you know, take my recommendations so seriously, uh, I would recommend using a screwdriver for that type of stuff. But, hey, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe your grandpa knows better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think if you use this like a knife, you'll probably be just fine. A uh, little fly on the logo there. That's really the only branding here on the show side. There's nothing on the blade. I think it looks just fine. It's a typical, just like a satin finish. I always prefer a tumbled finish, but there's nothing wrong with this at this price point. That's mostly preference. Anyway, this says YOLO on the blade, which I don't like for a couple of reasons. I know that 
<laughs> I, I don't know who designed this, but I know who's behind, you know, I know it's Sergio behind Kunwu, and Sergio's a really funny guy, and I know that he likes naming. <laughs> I know he, he likes naming stuff like this, so I, I have a feeling that's probably who named this. But you know, if not, I don't know. I think the people at Kumu just enjoy having a good time. I do appreciate that they printed 14 C 28 N. If that's actually what that says, I actually have to zoom up here. Yeah, they printed that super duper tiny, which I do like. Right? I love the fuller here. I love how it comes out of the little opening hole. I love how the inside edges of the. Uh, uh, the hole are, are, you know, knocked down. This is probably, you know, if somebody walks in the room right now and they, they hear me saying, yeah, you know, ac access the, the hole right here. This is really nice. This is really knocked down, right? That's going to be a little bit of an awkward moment, uh, if there's no context to that. So I'm sorry. Sorry about that. It's just, it's just a pocket knife review. That's all it is. Nothing weird going on here. Okay. Um, but yeah. I really enjoy the ergonomic lines, uh, both choked up and in the standard hammer grip. The nice thing about a wire clip, even if you're like me and you don't enjoy the aesthetic of it, it's not an uncomfortable clip because the whole thing, it's like a paper clip. The whole thing all the way around is radiused, right? So even if you're squeezing super hard, it really is not uncomfortable in the hand. This is a really comfortable knife to use, and it's also very friendly and easy to manipulate. Truly, the only downside to carrying this knife is for some people... This height might be a deal breaker. If it's not a deal breaker for you, this is an excellent knife. Certainly not a profile that we've never seen before. It's definitely been done before, but Kunwu has added their little bit of spice to it, their little bit of chili powder, their magic chili powder, and it makes it better, right? It just it just does little teeny tiny things that people wouldn't normally care about. And then once you find out that it is a thing, then you care about it, right? And they they did all that stuff. We do have a lanyard thing that's just part of the backspacer. In my opinion, this is the best way to do this. When you do a hole all the way through, then you have to put the screws in around the lanyard hole that nobody uses. And sometimes it messes up the optimal position for the pocket clip. In this case, no. Nice and deep carry. The pocket clip bill is behind the 50% line of the handle, meaning that it's not driving into the upper part of your hand, which is all where all the pressure is, if you're breaking down, you know, thick material, right, and you're squeezing it, all that pressure is like right here anyway. So if you have a, the bill of a clip that has to be lowered, Spider Co. Para 3, because of a huge lanyard hole, then it goes right into this part of your hand, which I don't like. Kunwu and Ironfly clearly uh, are cognizant of that, so I appreciate it. Uh, it's great that this can be mounted for lefties. Lefties, I think you'll actually have an easier time manipulating this knife because I think it's a little more natural to manipulate a button lock with uh, your index finger rather than your uh, thumb. Either way, it's fine. Right-handed people, you will not have to worry about accidentally disengaging this knife because no matter how you hold it, your fingers don't naturally fall on top of the button. If you are left-handed, it's like I always say, in the standard grip, you'll be fine. In a choked up grip, you should probably be fine, but enough pressure right here, you could in, I'm trying to do it myself, and yeah, you can. If you squeeze hard enough in the choked up position and it's right on top of that button, you could disengage it. So you need to be extra careful about that if you're left-handed. Just be aware of it. You don't want the thing disengaging while you're using it. Uh, we do have a stop pin located in its traditional spot with no shouldering, but that's fine. The knife runs on bearings, probably obvious. No blade play up, down, left, or right. Slight bit of stick, pretty typical for button locks right when you get them. This will work itself out in my experience. Uh, no pivot lash, extremely smooth in here, especially with the button depressed. Uh, and then we have, honestly, for a plunge lock ac acting as the detent, not bad. Like it, it feels like it's, I had to check and be like, is this a button operated liner lock? But no, it's just a really well done plunge lock. Well, I mean, look at this. That's nice. It really, I would think that that was a detent ball. Perfectly centered, right? St no detent lash, even on a plunge lock. Little details here. The reason I'm, you know, fluffing this up a little bit, I'm not, it's not fluff. I mean it, right? is because the price tag on this guy is $69 giggity. And for a lot of a lot of people are going to point out like, well there are, there are companies like Migron like pumping out the same thing almost for less money. Kind of. I'll get I'll hand it to Migron. Sometimes they do give you a titanium pocket clip and that's cool. But I really like that they've gone a little bit extra on the heat treat. 
Uh, I really like the contoured G10. It's been like perfectly, I mean, like the ergonomic lines here are great. The fact that they give you two pocket clips are great. Little details like the crown spine, which not everybody appreciates is great. So the, the whole thing is just incredibly easy to manipulate. The nested liners, right? That's a nice little detail. Just very thoughtful. It's very straightforward and simple, and it's certainly something that's been done before, but it's a combination of little tiny elements that do factually add to their cost. So while it is higher than a lot of the competition, it's still a budget knife, and I think it's a really, really great budget knife with the only real downside for some people being the height of the thing. Outside of that, though, this is really nice. And you know what? For a lot of people who look at Spyderco knives and think, you know, I'd really like something like that, you know, or I mean, like, that that's what it is most similar to, is something from Spyderco. But maybe you're looking at Spyderco and thinking even their cheap stuff is expensive, right? I mean, what are you, for 70 bucks, like, what can, you can get a Tenacious, an 8CR 13 MOV. Barf. Uh, no thank you. I love Spyderco knives, but pass on that. Um, so yeah, uh, I actually don't have a problem with this. Um, I think I would have been mind blown if this was like 59 bucks. 10 bucks more, I can't really argue with it. I think this is a really good budget knife. So it's gonna go on my cheap knives I like playlist because it is in fact an inexpensive knife, which on this channel is under $75, that I do in fact like. So if you like this, I think you'll really enjoy it uh, for sure. That's gonna be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.